Welcome to Minimalish. I'm your host, Desiree, and I want to encourage you to walk towards a simplified life and make room for what matters to you. Minimalism is the movement that's all about having less stuff so that you have more time for the things that you care about. It's become a pretty big thing and it's changed my life. But sometimes it feels like minimalism has become about subscribing to a trendy movement and trying to do it perfectly. My goal is to help you find a sustainable, realistic version of minimalism that actually makes sense for your life. Minimalish is about grace-filled minimalism. It certainly is not about doing it perfectly. And each week, We'll talk about the topics of simple living, motherhood, decluttering, slowing down, mindset shifts, and everything else in between that will help us move towards a more intentional life. And I'll often invite a guest on to chat with me about these topics as well. I'm so glad you're here, friend. Let's dive in. Hi friend, welcome back to Minimalish. You might be able to tell, or hopefully not, but probably, (laughs) I'm a little bit under the weather right now, so I just don't sound my best. But I'm here to chat with you anyway, so I hope it doesn't bother you too much. So today, I am closing out the series on work and school that I've been doing over the past month and a half. And I'm gonna talk to you today about the topic of changing our minds. Because I think our work that we choose as moms, whether that's working outside of the home, or staying at home, or working from home, and how we educate our children, whether that's sending them to school or keeping them home for school, these choices that we make are very important things. And that's what we've been focusing on over the past couple, uh, over the past month and a half. And I also think that we often grow and change in life. It's almost inevitable that we will grow and change, which is a good thing. And therefore, we might change our mind on what's best for us and our families in these areas of our lives. And by the way, I know that I couldn't necessarily cover all perspectives of the work that we choose as mothers and the ways that we choose to send our kids to school. I know I couldn't cover all of this in six weeks, but hopefully I covered a nice variety. And just so you know, I will continue to cover the topics of work and education going forth. Not every single week, of course, but every once in a while, I will talk about how we can simplify these things and how minimalism approaches these topics, and I'm sure I will have guests on to talk about these topics as well. So this is not the last time I'm talking about these things, but I just wanted to note that I know I can't cover all of it. But I do hope that you found that I approached some variety on these topics. Either way, I wanted to finish out this series by just giving you permission, and not in the way that I need to give you permission to make changes, but in the way that We need to give ourselves permission to be able to change our minds on these things and to be able to make changes and move forward with changes that we're thinking about and that we're wanting to make, specifically in the areas of our lives that involve our work and the schooling that we put our children through, but in every area of our life. So I just really hope that's what this episode does. It gives you permission and it gives you grace to make the change that you need to make. Or not even a change that you need to make, but a change that you want to make. So when it comes to these topics of work and school, it's okay when something that might have worked for a while or even a long time might not be working anymore. I think we tend to hold really tight to these things because it's a little bit scary to make a change or we're just used to how things have been. You know, these things do have weight to them and they are important. And we often, for some reason, also feel like we might look stupid if we change our minds. Like maybe we were homeschooling our kids for a while and we've changed our minds and we wanna send them to public school. We're worried what people will think about our changing minds. Maybe we are ready to make a career change again after like three years in one job and we're worried about what people are gonna think. I could give a thousand different examples, but we start to worry of what other people will think of us when we're ready to change our minds about something or make some kind of change in our lives. And then we're also crippled by the idea of fear of what will happen if this change doesn't end up being the right decision. 
I personally think we need to simplify that mindset. I think we put too much weight on these decisions often. Even though they are important things, we still put way too much weight on them. And I think this because I'm no stranger to it. I'm not the best with decision making. And I've definitely put too much weight on my decisions. I almost always think about what others will think of my decisions. And then I later realize that other people just aren't really thinking about me as much as I think they are. When it comes down to it, if we're thinking about making a change and changing our minds on something that's important to us, I think that these are things that hold us back that we can overcome. And I'm going to talk to you more about the things that do hold us back. And I want to help you kind of sort through them. And I also have a few encouragements or tips to help you move forward and decide if changing your mind is right in this season. And it doesn't have to be just about your work or how you send your kids to school. It can be anything, any change you're wanting to make in your life. So I think one of the biggest benefits of minimalism for me has been the freedom to think about what actually matters and then start to move my life in that direction. I've said that before on here. It doesn't mean that it's easy to do. It doesn't mean that change becomes less scary, but it does mean that I don't feel as locked into my life as it currently is. So how do we simplify this idea of changing our minds? I think personally, it's about keeping open hands when it comes to the choices that we make in these big things in our lives, like careers and schooling. Like these are big choices and often when we make these choices, we feel like we're in it for the long term. When we choose our career, when we get a new job and it is maybe in the career field that you got your degree in, we tend to jump into that with the idea that this is going to be a long-term thing. Or when we're choosing where we're going to send our kids to school, often we jump into that as a long-term thing. And when it comes to weightier decisions in our lives, we have to make those decisions thinking this is going to be a long-term thing. So what happens is we end up holding tight to them. And then when our life changes or when we change or when something comes up and we are starting to feel like we want to change our mind on these things, it's really hard to let go. We started on this path with closed hands and a tight grip. So I think simplifying it has a lot to do with letting go. But let me just first really quickly explain where I'm coming from here because I have changed my mind a lot. And that's why I'm talking to you about this, because I wish that I would have given myself more permission to change my mind earlier in the game on some things. It all worked out in the end, as it does, but I let myself get under a lot of stress while wanting to make certain changes. So when my family started out on our minimalist journey, I was a teacher. I was already in the process of making the change to stay at home mom and work at home mom, but I was afraid because we knew financially it was going to be tough. And don't get me wrong, it still can be. But this in itself made me not want to make the next move. And honestly, I was worried about what people would think of me when I made this change, especially people that I cared about. There were people in my life that honestly thought I should keep teaching and maybe eventually it would get better for me. But what it came down to was that after four years, and even before I was pregnant, even before I became a mom, I knew that teaching really wasn't for me. I learned that it wasn't feeling less stressful for me. I was fully confident that I wanted to change my mind about this career choice. And once I became a mom, I was fully confident that I wanted to be able to stay home with my daughter. And I knew that I would probably have to work from home, but I was okay with that. But it took me an entire year to actually dive into that decision. And I think there's something to be said about thinking through bigger decisions like this and giving things a good try. I think there's something to be said about that. But looking back, I put myself under so much stress and anxiety when I knew in my heart that I wanted to be home and that I had work from home options but I was just battling with this idea of fear because teaching was stable and it was security and it was the thing that I went to school with and 
It was the thing that I got into debt for. And it was the thing that a lot of people thought that I should be doing. But it wasn't the thing that I thought I should be doing. So either way, it wasn't until my husband and I really took a dive into minimalism that I was able to finally make that decision because minimalism actually allowed us to make a lot of changes as a family. We started to question what really mattered and we started to move towards those things. And that's why really I think minimalism can help us with decision fatigue because it helps us, one, clear out the physical clutter, which then helps us clear out the mental clutter. And it gives us clarity. It gives us space to redefine what's important. And for me, it's given me the ability to realize that I'm in control of my time. And I've only got one life to live. Not in the YOLO, do crazy things because you only have one life to live type of way. But in the way that reminds me that I have one life. I want to live it fully. And I want to live it well. And I have one lifetime to make an impact on the people around me and to love others well. And I won't be able to do that if I can't even allow myself the grace to change my mind and walk towards what matters as my life and my seasons change. So let's take some weight off of changing our minds. First of all, here's a list of some other things I've changed my mind on over the past few years. Like I said, my career. And then I had two part-time from home jobs and I've changed my mind on those. I've changed my mind about this podcast name twice, and that felt like a weightier decision than it was. It was really okay to make that change, but I put way too much weight on it. I've changed my mind several times about the location of my daughter's toys in our home, and sometimes I think I even put too much weight on that decision. I've changed my mind about what I do during my morning routine, and I've changed my mind about whether my almost two-year-old daughter will be homeschooled or be in public school, which is kind of silly because I probably have at least three more years of changing my mind on that, if not more, before it actually happens. So I say all of that to say that if you feel like you change your mind on things a lot, you're not alone. We grow and change as people. I know I already said that, but I want to reiterate that that's normal and it's okay to try something out and decide that maybe it's not working the best and Give yourself permission to try it another way. When it comes down to it, it's about the heart that we're doing it with. Like, why are we wanting to change our minds? And if you're doing it for the right reason, if you're moving towards a change to better your life and the people around you, then it's okay to take steps in that direction. I want to take a second to talk to you about a decision I've been spending less time making And that is the decisions around meal planning. Today's sponsor is PrepDish. PrepDish is a meal planning service. And each week, PrepDish will send you an email with a meal plan, grocery list, and prep ahead instructions so that all of your meals are planned out and completely ready for the week. You can even choose from gluten-free, paleo, and keto options, which makes eating healthier so much easier. And bonus, the meals are also delicious and toddler approved. There's no guesswork when it comes to actual meal time each day, which for a mom is basically a lifesaver. Not only does it make meal planning easier, you literally no longer even have to think about it. This is so helpful for the busy mom, which back to school season definitely brings busier seasons for many of us. I've personally been loving using prep dish for months now because it's taken meal planning off my plate and giving me more time for the things I actually enjoy doing. The best part is that Allison, the founder, is offering listeners of Minimalish a two-week free trial. That's literally two weeks of meals planned out for you. Grocery lists and prep included for free. Head to preptish.com slash minimalish. That's preptish.com slash minimalish to try it out. Okay, back to today's episode. So I want you to think about maybe a change that you want to make in your life. Okay, I'm going to give some examples. Maybe you want to stay at home and find work from home, but you're not sure how that's going to work out. You're currently maybe working full-time out of the home or maybe vice versa. Maybe you stay at home with your kids, but you're thinking about returning to work. 
Maybe your kids are currently homeschooled. You're thinking of sending them to public school or vice versa. These are just examples that relate to the series that I'm wrapping up in this episode. But of course, there are a million other examples. So think of that thing. If there is something that you are wanting to change your mind on. And these are some questions that can help you kind of discern, is this the right change to at least try out? Because here's the thing. I don't think you have to have the exact right answer to step towards it. You can step towards it, and if you have to, you can change your mind again. So the first question is, is the way that it's currently is going serving you well? So why would you stay in that career? Or why would you stay at home if you're wanting to go back to work? Why would you not change your mind? Is it serving you well in some way? Number two, what might be better about the change? So those are two questions to kind of think over. And a way that you can do this is really just the good old fashioned pros and cons list. I mean, this is a tried and true way to validate changing your mind. Of course, for me, I think it's really worked to help me move forward in what decision I wanna make almost every time I've used it. So it's a good, simple way to help discern what choice you wanna make. You can also think about how this change will affect the people around you. Because when it comes down to it, we are not in this life on our own. We've got people that our choices will matter to. So here's the thing, though. I think if you're making this change because it's going to make you happier, it's going to lift stress off of you, it's going to help you feel like you're stepping into your purpose, it might feel selfish, but... I think in most cases, it's not selfish. If you're happier, your family will be too. And if it's going to serve your family well, move towards it. So those are just some questions to think about as you start to discern if you really should change your mind and you really should walk towards that change. Now, if you're ready to make the change, but it still feels hard, if you've kind of went through the pros and cons, and you've decided, yeah, this is the right decision for us, but you still cannot take that leap, here are some things that I hope will help. The first one is to let go of other people's opinions. This is so important. Remember that it is your life, and you deserve to do the things that fill you up within the bounds of your current season. You get to decide what is best for you and your family. Like, obviously, we have to think of the people that our choices will affect, too. But you're the one who gets to decide what will be best for you and your family. And you get to make that choice to move towards those things. If the opinions you're worried about are outside of the immediate people your choice will affect, the problem is they aren't living your life. You are. And you should be happy because, like I said before, if you're happy, I think your family will be too. And that's important. You know, that goes for anyone in your family. If your spouse is wanting to make a change, I hope you would give them that permission too. If it's something that would bring them joy and lightness and therefore bring your family joy and lightness. Of course, I know it's not that easy all the time. Either way, I think when we're making the choice that brings us happiness that moves us towards what's most important to us, that plays on our strengths. I think that those are often the choices that are also best for our family. The second thing is to just surrender it. Let go of the thing. You're probably holding on too tightly if you can't make a decision one way or the other. And I know that because I've been there. If you've been homeschooling for a long time and it feels too hard and you feel like you need a change, surrender it. Move forward after letting go in the direction that would be best. If it's a career change, surrender security because I think that's what keeps us from making career changes is this idea of security and the fear of what if it doesn't work out? And we're going to get there in a second. Surrender the idea that there is only one option for you, which brings me to number three, abundance mentality. Stop believing that there is a scarcity of good in the world and a scarcity of options available to you. Stop letting yourself live trapped 
in your current choices and begin believing that there's an abundance of good in the world. That just because you change directions doesn't mean that you'll lose what you need to live well. Chances are you're thinking of a change because you're not living well right now. So move towards the belief that there is abundance. That you're not in some imaginary competition and, you know, if you make a change, then you're going to lose something and someone else is going to gain it. There is an abundance of love, opportunity, and goodness in the direction that you would like to go. I think this is such an important mindset to embrace if we're wanting to change our minds and let go freely and do it with less anxiety and less stress. Number four, you can always change your mind again. If you don't take chances and see the changes through that you're wanting to make, what will happen? What might you miss out on if you don't take these chances? I'm not trying to scare you into making a change, but truly just answer the question. Why do you want to make this change and what will you miss if you don't? On the other hand, if you do change your mind, what is the absolute worst thing that can happen? I think the worst thing that could happen is probably that it just won't work out and you're going to have to make another change. And honestly, that's okay. Keep open hands. You can change your mind. And life will be so much lighter when you let go of your tight grip on the way things are and allow for changes, for moving towards the things that matter and the things that you care about most. I know it can be scary, but it can also be just really worth it to see those changes that you want to make through. See them through as long as they wouldn't be harmful to the people around you as long as it's not causing disruption or like destruction to your family, move towards those things. Even if it feels scary, even if it feels a little bit hard, see what happens. I hope this gave you the permission that you need. If you're really thinking through something and feeling a lot of anxiety on a change, because for me, that's what I did for over a year with my career change. And when I finally made the change, even though like, I will be the first to say it did not, not everything went perfectly. Finances were tough for a while. Sometimes they still can be. I've changed a lot in the process. It's been still so good for me and so good for my family. It would not have been good for me or my family had I never made the decision to make the change and to follow the change that went on in my mind. Also, just a note I feel like I had to make, I hope this goes without saying, but you should obviously always discuss changes and changes in your mind with your people, your family, mentors, anyone who would help you make those decisions. You know, that's always a good step in a decision-making process, but I really wanted this episode to be about overcoming fear and overcoming other people outside of that inner circle, other people's opinions and permission to change your mind because it doesn't make you look stupid because we we change our minds we change our lives change our seasons change and it is okay to walk towards changes that will be positive for you and the people around you friend i really hope that you enjoyed this series where we focused in a little bit on the topics of work in school it was just kind of fun for me to have a focus on the podcast for a while like an actual focused topic but we are moving right back into regularly scheduled minimalish content which just means each week you will hear from me on some kind of topic that deals with minimal-ish living intentional living and motherhood. Also, if you enjoyed this episode and if it encouraged you in some way, share it with a friend, share it on social media, wherever you spend the most time. If you're sharing it on Instagram, make sure to tag me so that I can thank you at minimalish.desiree. I appreciate your help in getting the word out about minimalish. I cannot do this without you. It also encourages me to keep going. So I'm super thankful for you. And I cannot wait to talk to you back here again next week.